Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my latest tutorial for the multiplayer add-on and the component. Uh, if you've been following my progress you'll notice that now there isn't just the Python component for uh, Blender 2.57 Mercury's build but actually there's also a add-on. Now what is special about this add-on? Well the add-on allows you to use the component in any Blender revision I think later than 2.6. I may be wrong but it works in 2.61, 2.62, and I believe 2.60, so it should all be fine. There were a few API changes which probably would stop it from working in a, any 2.5 versions, although feel free to check. Um, so yeah, the new direction basically means I have to try and try and unify the entire setup, because to be honest, up to this point, I've really just been churning up updates, trying to get the whole thing into a really good state for everyone and I don't really understand how to quite say this but it was a the standards would change a lot I would change variables and I forget to update the documentation and it got a bit a bit messed up so now I've made the whole series the same thing the add-on and the component should be cross compatible now hopefully this doesn't all go wrong I'm gonna have to change it later on but essentially they're all the same thing now the best place to check for updates is probably my website, following that the Blender Artists, but also my Google pay code page. So I'll show you the two. There's http colon slash slash code dot google dot com forward slash p forward slash bge hyphen multiplayer. Might be wrong. No, it's BGE yeah, BG network. And on there you'll find the, all the videos and source and information. This is probably the best place to check on how to use the entire setup because if you go into the wiki you can view the introduction and the introduction will tell you a little bit of how everything works. You go to the terminal that will tell you what that does and if you go to the plugins that will tell you what that does as well with some sample code. So this is probably the best place to, to learn how to create and use the system. But again, if you haven't already seen my new website, uh, I say new, it's not that new to be honest. Lostarstudios.com, um, and either use the links or go forward slash networking. And here you'll see there's now a component plugin and tutorials page. The tutorials will show you my very first tutorials you need to update, and the plugin will take you to the Blender Artist page for now. Um, and yeah, that's just really how you get started. Now, there is a problem. A lot of the old tutorials for the latest setup will be relatively different, if not working at all. I'm going to remove the videos at some point. So now you need to know how I'm going to actually use the system for you or for me. So, because many people have Blender 2.6 and it has many feature advantages over the components build for now, I'm going to use the add-on as my primary example. But I will re reference uh, the components build. So, start up Blender. I have lots of different blenders on here, but this is 2.6. And you're presented with the default view. Now, if you haven't already installed the add-on, you can either follow the instructions here on the wiki in the introduction page. And if you look down here, you'll see you download the files from the download page, which at the moment is the multiplayer one by zip. That's going to update today. And you download the files, extract them into the app data add-ons page, or Adam's folder, pardon me. Or you can use um, you can use the install add-on function. What that does is just download the zip file, save it somewhere you know where you can find it, and then use the install add-on button from Blender, which can be found in the add-ons page. So whether you're installing it via whichever method, go to user preferences and add-ons. Now you can click the install add-on button and find your zip file and click install, and it does all the hard work for you or you can copy the files. Once you've copied the files or installed um, the add-on, press F8 to make sure it fully refreshes the add-ons and you'll see a new thing called Game Engine colon multiplayer add-on. And here you have the, oh this is actually out of date but I need to modify this, but it's, well, it'll be 1.51 when I've released the latest version. And it just tells you what the add-on is to click enable. Once you've clicked enable, if you press control right or select the game logic view, you'll see a new panel down here, or you should do. 
If not, look on your error console because you've probably got an install problem. And you'll see, anyway, this new panel. For now, hide the properties window. This panel basically does everything that you've done before, but in a nice little GUI form. So, first things first. This is ready to go out of the box. You want to create a multiplayer game. That means you want to connect to a server or host a server and connect to a server. Now, the slight problem is that at the moment the logic for the play game gets executed before the logic for the host game. So if you're hosting, it won't start the host until after you try to connect to it, which then just fails. So you need to modify. Um, so I'm not going to host it on. I'm going to host it on a separate blend. Host game. Simply click host game, and you'll see all lots of new logic bits have been created. If you mess them up, as soon as you uncheck it, it should remove them as well, and the property should disappear. Don't try not to touch the logic if you can. Now, this will host a game on port 1200. Maximum of four players can connect, and uh, the timeout and seconds before we disconnect each player. So that's ready to go as a host. So you can save it, show the console by help toggle system console, and press P. And you'll see some interesting stuff in the console. Now, open up another instance of Blender for your clients. And again, you should have the add on enabled, but in case you haven't saved it as you put uh, in case you haven't saved the default settings, you will have to enable it again. I'd recommend starting up there going to the add ons, enabling it, and saving that as your default settings. So, then on your clients, click play game and hide the properties in the panel. And here you will see server address, server port, frequency and name. Frequency essentially is the update for sending data. The higher the frequency, the higher the rate of sending data, up to 60. Anything after 60, which I don't believe you can set, no you can't, but anything above than 60 wouldn't work. It doesn't make a difference. Now, your name is just the name of the client. Later on that will be integrated into my MultiPy library, which would allow just access to who's playing, because at the moment I use little IDs, numbers, because they're small and large, large strings of names, and you, it means that you never have someone with the same name. But that's a little bit of info for you. Which is why, if you look in the console when someone connects, you might see it says player 5 connected, rather than, and then player 12, and then player 1, even though there's only three players playing. That's why. It's in a random ID. So you don't have to set this, but you can. Localhost is the address of the server, so in this case I'm hosting it on my PC, I can just type localhost. Um, now, plugins. Same same idea as before, but in this case you don't have to add the manager plugin because it's already added as part of the logic. You'll see it in here, as well as random spawn, these are just little plugins I've stuck in there. You shouldn't need to add this one, and this one is nothing to do with networking at all, but you could add it. That basically, uh, the random spawn plugin will spawn, if you click plus, it'll spawn this cube in a random point on a mesh if you tell it to, but we're not going to use that to delete it. So, if I add a position plugin, click plus, scroll down, and you can see all these options. These options, I'm quite proud of this, to be honest, but <laughs> basically, when you start installing the add-on, it will look, it'll extract all the files, and then it will look into the um, plugins.py, which is downloaded in the same folder, and it'll read all the classes from it that are net Python components, which are these. It'll then allow you to add them, and it'll get their options to add them as elements here. So if you if you mess up your file and you can't see anything, that's probably why. Now, uh, you can change the object entity. This is what you see representing the other clients, because when a client connects to your game, all that happens is you receive information that they're sending, which in this case would be their position. You need to create an object that represents them, which is why you need to type in the name of the object here. So in this case, if I add cube, this main player that's running all the logic is called cube, so what would happen there is you get a paradox where you add hundreds of objects because they would connect. Each object would connect to the, the server, it would detect a new client and add it. That By adding it, it would add itself and it gets really confusing. So make sure you have a different name in here, which in this case, go to hidden layer, create a sphere, remember the name, right click your cube again, and type sphere in here. Now you'll notice in here, I can set this above 60 because it's the way in which the, the settings are initialized. Um, Anything above 60 won't make a difference, as I've already said. Um, so, what do we do now? Well, basically, 
you can optimize the data. Enabling op optimize, what this does is when your client isn't sending new data, when things changed, it won't send anything, and that saves your bandwidth. Raw data, raw data basically means it can, when you create a plugin, you can give it two options. The compressed data and non-compressed data. Non-compressed data is raw data like vector forms and stuff. Compressed data is basically the same thing, but you can round it off so it's a smaller size or something like that. Now, when you've done that, you're ready to go. That's all there is to it. Um, interestingly now, I've designed a plugin so it creates all the Python files in your blend. What this means is two things. Firstly, when you create a game, when you save it or it's runtime, it'll still work in multiplayer. But also, it means that you don't have to um, have the add-on installed when you copy the blend over to other people's um, uh, computers. The problem is that um, if you modify any of the Python files inside the game, it might revert to the ones outside. So the best thing to do is just, once you've got your add-on, don't change any of the, the, the Python files, or if you do, change both the ones inside. If you do, change. If you want to change, sorry, if you want to change your Python code uh, in any of the multiplayer stuff, which you shouldn't need to, then change the stuff outside the blend and reload the component, pressing F8, because the text files will then be reloaded in, and it'll change them. That's all there is to it, really. Yeah. Uh, last bit of background information. You might be wondering why I've only got one logic brick for lots of different bits of logic. Um, I've made a little wrapper, a bit like FlexiComp by LAH on Blender Artists, and what this does is it runs, if I show you the properties window, you'll see something called components, this is a list of component names with their module and their um, function, and then these are the properties for each one, and it just reads them off. So it's quite efficient in a way. Um, it could be better, probably, I don't really know, I haven't looked into it much. And that's basically the whole thing. The only other thing to note is that any of the logic here in the settings panel, this is something called scene logic. What this means is if you go to another object, you'll see this button still remains checked, even though this has no logic. This is because you only need to have one of these options checked through, entire, through the entire scene. So even though there's no logic, it says you have logic. Why? Well, this is referring to the logic on this cube. I go on this cube, uncheck it, disappears, check it, reappears. I'll remove this plugin so you can see. If I uncheck it, all the logic goes. If I check it, all the logic reappears.